So I remember as a kid, we didn't have cable. All we had were four channels on an old TV and all of them were actually news stations. And I remember every now and then when there was a particularly left-leaning BS news story, my late mother would pipe in and say, propaganda. Uh, today, again, without cable, except this time it's by choice, it's become really common for me to actually hear my mom's voice inside my head when I'm watching various news segments, especially from our state broadcaster, the CBC. Now, just this week, for instance, uh, the CBC put out a vid from Tehran titled Iranian Woman Adding Fashion to the Hijab. The fashionable scarves are designed to make women look more chic, says Mansour Bayat, one of the company's owners. This way, women can keep their hijab and look more attractive at the same time, she says. Yeah, nothing says attractive like a black polyester sheet over a woman's head. Mm -hmm. Propaganda. So the CBC's Islamo-globalist agenda is no secret. However, well, they've encountered a little bit of a dilemma when it comes to spinning one particular story, which is creating, well, some problems for the Trudeau government. That story? It's Canada's refugee crisis. No, I'm not talking about the tens of thousands of Muslims coming into our country from Syria. I'm talking about the refugees coming in from America. Because in case you haven't heard, Canada is now accepting refugees from the United States. Well, Manitoba is doing most of the receiving, which means that the hordes are coming from ISIS-controlled North Dakota and Minnesota. To be sure, refugees is actually CBC's word, and it's about all the spin that they can muster. You see, these people aren't refugees. By definition, common sense and oh yeah, by the terms of our international agreement called the Safe Third Party Agreement, yeah, they can't be refugees. They're coming from the United States where there is no persecution to flee. There's no danger there. They're not refugees. They're not asylum seekers. They're just plain old illegals. P.S. Don't be fooled. They're not running away from President Donald J. Trump. They're actually running towards Canada's Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau. I mean, the guy's literally broadcasting invitations to fake refugees via Twitter, even accompanying his beckoning call with his cucked, multi-culty slogan of, diversity is our strength. Anyway, so a bunch of illegals are now crossing our border with the U.S., and they're arriving in typical refugee style, in buses, in taxis, even in luxury vehicles, bringing no, not just the clothes on their back, but whole suitcases and strollers, which are then carried by our bar border officers, turned into bellboys once these folks cross into Canada. Now, of course, the CBC doesn't show all this. They just throw around the terms refugee and asylum seeker with nondescript pictures of snowy landscapes and random white people. So to the reader, the whole refugee thing, well, it seems pretty innocuous. But the truth is, it's not. Folks on the ground in Emerson, Manitoba, which has become the town on the front line of the illegal surge, they're getting bloody knocks on their doors in the middle of the night. Can you imagine what that's even like? Charity and humanitarian groups on the ground, like the Salvation Army, they're running out of space for illegals. And now the crisis is metastasizing with a twin surge of illegals all the way over in British Columbia, where the refugees are coming from, I don't know, Al-Qaeda-controlled Washington state? So now provincial politicians and residents are, well, they're begging the feds for help. They say that this crisis is getting totally out of hand. They never asked for this mess. They, unlike their uh, prime minister, well, they never sent an invitation out to fake refugees to illegally cross into Canadian soil. So how have the feds responded? Well, Canada's immigration minister, who, side note, is a refugee himself, yeah, he's not convinced. To hell with what the premier and the residents say. He needs more proof. As for Canada's public safety minister, well, he says, don't sweat it, because these illegals, well, they were always planning on coming to Canada, so we're good. Yeah, but there's one little snag to the Fed's policy of ignore and evade. The numbers, they speak for themselves. You see, every week, the RCMP, it's been releasing the numbers, just how many illegals have been entering our country from the U.S. Last week, for instance, the RCMP said that 19 people illegally crossed into Emerson, Manitoba alone. Meantime, well over 200 illegals have come to Emerson since the beginning of the year, which, when you think about it, is a little bit crazy. I mean, if 200 illegals have crossed into the border when the average temperatures were between minus 1 and minus 21 degrees Celsius, how many illegals are destined for Manitoba in April, in May, or any of the more forgiving summer months? I mean, if things carry on at this rate, 
RCMP numbers will get so big, the CBC might be forced to use pictures of actual people, illegal hordes crossing the border, not just empty landscapes. I mean, those RCMP numbers, they'll get so big in the coming months, liberal cabinet ministers and heck, the big guy RPM himself might be forced to admit that they've created a crisis. So, hmm, what to do, oh, what to do. Hey, here's an idea. What if the RCMP just stopped telling people the numbers? Yeah, let it do it. If the RCMP just stopped releasing the numbers, then Canadians, I mean, outside those who have illegals banging on their doors every single night, <laughs> So those people, well, other Canadians, they won't have any idea of how many illegals are crossing into our country. Okay, but I'm not even kidding. Here's an RCMP spokesperson. As of today, the RCMP will no longer be releasing weekly numbers regarding people illegally crossing the border from the United States into Manitoba as we are looking at providing a more consolidated approach. Um, consolidated approach? What does that even mean? I'll tell you what I think it means. I think it means that our federal police are prioritizing political messaging over protecting people. I think that the top brass of the RCMP, guys who, by the way, just got a big fat check from the feds, as their frontliners got absolutely squat, I think that the fat cats at the top of the RCMP are doing their buddies in the government a solid. I think that the RCMP's choice to block information is, as my mother would say, propaganda. And I'm not going to stand for it. Just because the RCMP are running interference for the feds and the CBC is all too happy to do their part, doesn't mean that the people in Emerson should be forced into becoming the front lines of a manufactured crisis. Look, if you want to see some broadcast border patrol, if you want to see me head to the front lines of Canada's fake refugee crisis with real consequences, let me know in the comment section below. And I will happily pack my bags and give you the real scoop on Justin Trudeau's stupid invitation to economic opportunists. For the Rebel.media, I'm Faith Goldie. If you like this video, click like below and subscribe to our YouTube channel.